Welcome back trainers. So check it out. We have Giovanni photo bombing over at GoFest in Japan. This is very interesting. We thought he was going to be introduced back in the 28th and simply what happened was all the Pokestops were taken over by Team Rocket and no sign of Giovanni whatsoever except for that tweet that they did put out on the main account there saying that they're done with this account for now but they'll be back. So we were also discussing how he was going to be introduced. Is he going to be coming through a Pokestop like the Grunts or will he be taking over a gym in which he will have six Pokemon that you will have to go up against? I'm not too sure if they would be Shadow or just regular higher CP than they can actually be at for that specific Pokemon, making it extremely difficult for you to beat. And I really hope that is the case. So if he was to take over, say, Pokestops and we are going to go up against him in a PvP battle mode, and he did say have like a 2800 Persian. Could you imagine? Persians max out around 1600. And if you were to go up against a Persian with 2800 CP and scratch in a PVP mode, do you know how badly that is going to tear into your Pokemon no matter what you're using? Even if you're going with a Steel or a Ghost type resisting that scratch, it's going to be absolutely insane. That's just a, a little thought on how it could possibly be extremely difficult. We're also going to be going over a few tips when you do go up against Grunts and possibly even Giovanni in the future and how to make it a little bit easier on yourself. Saying you're having trouble actually going up against the Snorlax, Snorlax, Dragonite team or just any of them for that matter. Maybe you're a lower level and just some of them are difficult because they do come at a pretty high CP. You can go in there with good counters depending upon what that Grunt is saying upon entry so you will know what the types of pokemon to pick but i'm going to be showing you a little trick that you can do to prolong the battle and make the opponent stop attacking to help you get the upper hand if you are losing so with that said let's go ahead and get into this video and i have some more information too regarding the current events all right trainers so we do have new tasks that are going to be revolving around go fest as well as Pikachu with the Santa hat that was here. And now we're going to get a new one every day for a few days here in which they can possibly be shiny. Also take note that you're going to be able to hatch Pichus from eggs when you do have that specific hat for that day. Personally for me, I did hatch a Pichu with a Santa hat, not shiny of course. Also we have Poliwag which can be shiny in the wild. And if you're wondering, are the spawns increased for Poliwag? I would say not so much. They're there. I caught about, I'd say, a good 25 of them, but of course none were shiny. That's alright, I'm just going to get back onto that grind tomorrow. As well as different spawns in the wild, and seeing a lot of Skarmory, Drift Bloom, a few Sneasel here and there, and as well as a few others. So, good look out there trying to find those shinies. As far as the tasks here, all of these are going to yield the specific Pokemon. Poliwag, Lotad, Tailu, Swablu and snow runt so the first one is going to be make two great curve throws in a row win three gym battles win a raid hatch an egg and evolve three pokemon and like i said all of those are going to yield you the pokemon seen below so good luck out there i did a good amount of them i was getting a lot of low tad and swablu and i probably got maybe one polywag out of all of the tasks that i did and i did complete about i'd say 35 to 40 of those so there you have it and I will be leaving a link in the description for Leak Duck so you can check them out for all the images that we are looking at here. So now let's go ahead and move on to the next bit, which is going to be the raids. If you're not aware what they are currently, I do believe they shifted back. They've been kind of like swapping a little bit. So here it is for you to see. Tier 1, Poliwag, Lotad, Tailu, Swablu, Snowrunt, Bagon, and Shinx for the Tier 2, Cloyster, Exeggutor, Sneasel, Curlia and Mawile. And then the tier threes, we have Alolan Raichu, Onyx, Jinx, Aerodactyl, and Pillow Swine. For the tier fours, we have Marowak, Lapras, Dragonite, Togetic, and Granbull. And then of course, for the current legendary raid, we have Rayquaza, which can be shiny. So good look out there if you're trying to find that. That's definitely something you want to add to your collection. And then of course, the current EX raid boss, Deoxys, speed form unfortunately still can't wait to see what the next one's gonna be and we'll be talking more about that soon all right now let's go ahead and get into that team rocket tip i was discussing regarding making them stop attacking for a few seconds here now we'll be going up against two snorlax and a dragonite um we're gonna go ahead and test that out now the machamp was gonna be going down quite quick going up against that lick snorlax and if you go up against a zen headbutt uh, you may want to use something other than a machamp possibly a Lucario or even 
a Dialga works pretty nicely. So just take note of that. The Zen Headbud on the Snorlax for these Team Rocket grunts is just devastatingly strong. So this image is by Leak Duck yet again and link in the description if you want to download that yourself. Those are all the phrases as well as the types that they do use. And then it's kind of recommending which types you should use going up against it. So picking my team here, like I said, Dialga works great for these Snorlax when Zen Headbud as well as possible Lick. And uh, this is what we're going to do. So Lick is just going to rip right through my Machamp right off the bat. And if I do not use this tactic here, then it was going to go down fairly quick and I uh, probably would have lost this battle. So as you can see, the Lick is just going right through the Machamp and my counters aren't doing much. So I'm going to switch and that is the trick. You're going to make them stop attacking and they're obviously going to be going in there with the full health Machamp or whatever else Pokemon you're using. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, Dynamic Punch. And you should probably practice as much as you can to get that excellent. And we're going to be taking it down. Now we're going to be getting in a few counters here, enabling my Dynamic Punch to be charged slightly, which is going to be to my advantage going into this next Snorlax. And when they do come in, they do not tack for about a second and a half there. So we're going to go ahead and get this Dynamic Punch. I'm pretty sure I got it great this time. Oh no, another excellent. Nice. So the Machamp is looking pretty good. And let's go ahead and see how I'm going to be finishing this off here. And it does take me out barely, but that's perfectly fine. So as you can see, if I was to stay in that first match with the Machamp and did not switch, the first one would have gone down and I would have had to probably back out because I couldn't have done it with just the Rayquaza going up against the Snorlax and then this Dragonite finally here. So uh, if you're going to be going up against that Dragonite, it can have Steel Wing. So Steel Wing will just destroy your fairy types right as well as your ice types too so take note of that dialga may be an, another nice option going up against it uh, like we went over but i have my rayquaza here and say you're a lower level trainer or you just simply do not have things powered up you may want to use that switch tactic uh, to help you stop them attacking enabling you to get off some more hits uh, while they're just sitting there vulnerable so as you can see here if i did not do that switch in the beginning i definitely would have lost this so uh, you may want to give it a shot. Works out pretty nice. Every time I find myself almost about to lose, I simply switch. And if I did have the correct Pokemon to go up against it, I would usually win that battle. Say you're in a hurry, you did spin the stop, and you've moved on, right? And you simply can't go back. And if you think to yourself, well, shoot, I'm about to lose this match, just try to use that switch deal, and you should be okay. So we're going to go ahead and go into this catch screen here with the Snorlax. And I was actually able to find myself a Shadow Magikarp in which I did evolve it into Shadow Gyarados. I didn't care about the IVs. I am stacked on Magikarp candy. So we just went ahead and did that evolution because it looks pretty neat, right? So who doesn't want a Shadow Gyarados? And this is probably going to be my fourth or fifth Shadow Snorlax here. I haven't purified any. I just don't really find uh, it necessary, to be honest. If you had a good IV one, I say, shoot, go for it. But I already have plenty so I really don't need to do that. Uh, probably sooner or later I will, but there you go. There's my tip, guys. Just try switching. That helps quite a bit, as well as using the correct types when you do go up against those specific grunts. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at this Shadow Magikarp evolution and quickly talk about Giovanni yet again. So what do you guys think is going to happen? How is he going to get it introduced? Through the gyms or through the Pokestops? And is he going to have an absurd amount of CP on his Pokemon? I'm not going to say almost unbeatable, but so hard that you're going to have to pick the perfect counters and use the switch tactic as well as everything else within your meads to beat him. If that's the case, I really hope so. Um, honestly, I really think he's going to come through the gyms. That would just be a lot more fitting. Having the grunts at the Pokestops and then, you know, the big bad boss man sitting in the big tower of a gym it would just make sense, right? So say he was going to be coming through the Pokestops like the regular Grunts in which that's going to be a PvP battle. Only three Pokemon. Which three would he pick? Well, I'd say he would have like a pool of maybe 10 different Pokemon in which it would be randomized every single time. Who knows? Just a thought. But like we just went over, I'm thinking it's going to be through the gyms. With that said, trainers, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Get hype for Giovanni in Pokemon Go. And I will be catching you all next time. Take care.